Hi, Nina. Hi, Dave. Great to be able to speak with you today. And uh, yeah, we first met a few months ago and you're the niece of Fiana, who is uh, someone who's featured on my channel, but also someone I've um, had lots of conversations with. And um, yeah, so your realization emerged a little while ago. So it would be great for you just to describe how that happened and how things are developing from here. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite a story, actually, uh, because you had already spoken to my aunt, Piana. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was in the summer of 21, 2021, I was talking to her. And all of a sudden, she was just, she had self realized. And she was just living in this beautiful bubble of happiness. Um, that was quite contagious, but I didn't really understand what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, I was far removed from, from that way of being, from self-realization at that point. And so I had curiosity, and then, but I didn't understand what she was saying. And she just said, go, go get the greatest secret and you'll get a little introduction to it. Mm -hmm. And she and I had really, our whole lives, since I was 15, she has you know, introduced me to anything self-help, any new ideas that emerged for her. Mm -hmm. So we've always had this bond of of self-help or looking for answers and so you know I trusted her I got the book and I remember sitting on the couch reading all morning and my husband said something to me and I could hardly answer him because I really felt that after having read the whole book in one sitting that my mind was completely blown I mean something had shifted in me that I, I couldn't put words to and I just felt I mean, this resonates on, on so many levels, all these different teachers coming in. I could hear it so powerfully because mm. it was so many different ways of saying the same thing. Yes. And, um, but I put it aside, didn't think anything of it. <laughs> mm. And um, I don't even think I talked to Piana about it at that point. I was just busy doing my own life. And then what happened is I had, after that, I guess, yeah, 21, I went to Europe I grew up in Denmark with her, but I live in, in America now. But I went to Europe to see my family for Christmas. And we hadn't seen each other in years because of COVID. And I was so excited. And my whole family was there. And I don't remember ever having such a blowout. <laughs> uh, <laughs> people at this point in my life, really. Like I managed to alienate almost everyone except my husband and my son who are, you know, stay true always to me. <laughs> but it was, it was really painful and I didn't understand what was happening really. Hmm. Uh, but I felt like I didn't belong there. I felt like they didn't understand me hmm. and I felt rejected on every wow. level. So it's just, and I, at that point, I'm I'm already a life coach. And so mm. I know how to work my mind. And I'm trying. And every day my husband's like, just go, go coach yourself. Go. Mm. And I couldn't get out of it. It was so, it was so painful mm. that disconnect with my family. Mm. And then, you know, I came home from Europe and I had another conversation with a family member that felt even more painful. And so I was still spinning in it and I couldn't let it go. And I was taking responsibility for it, but I also just was very upset and angry with them for what I saw mm. and what they're doing to me, mm. <laughs> which is now very funny. Well, some, yeah, sometimes when there's, a, when there's a development in consciousness, you know, having read um, the book, then it it can create a ripple right the way through the family in some way because they've because it's one it's a single field then that field can be affected and it can affect everyone in it so that's uh that does happen quite a lot really yeah well you explained that to me which was good to know because i'm like how can i have this awareness now and then this is happening to me and and i i couldn't get out of it but it's starting to it started to loosen already in in March, and I was I was reading more. And at this point, I had already seen all your interviews, and I was taking in everything that you had been talking about on Conscious TV and your interviews. And I started to see my story so clearly with that um, with that dynamic of my family 
a feeling yes. like I was on, on the outside. Hmm. Um, and I could see it. And, and once I saw that, it really didn't take hardly any time for me to see that this was a beautiful gift that they had given me. Hmm. You know, that they were really there to give me this gift of this wound of I don't belong. Hmm. That really, like I'm, I think I told you, like, um, I'm invited always to the party, but I'm not welcome. It's an interesting, I, that's quite a unique one, Nina. I've not heard of that one before. <laughs> but yeah. It's, yeah, that's really fascinating. And I, I saw it, once I saw that, you mm. know, in that big instance, I could trace it all the way back, that it was always operating, mm. that mental invitation to to feel like I was on the outside. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, my I think you know that my, my parents divorced when I was two mm. and I grew up with my mom and my stepfather in Denmark and then my father was in America. So I only got to see him once a year for six weeks. Mm. And there was just something about, I always felt like I was welcome. You know, I felt special, mm. but mm. then I, um, or I was invited, as I said, but there was just a part of me that wasn't quite included in the family dynamic. Mm. I couldn't quite be with my dad mm. and I couldn't quite be the center of attention with my my mom and my stepfather and mm. my new sister. Mm. Um, so I just, I saw that clearly. And I could really thank them. I could really see how they were showing up for me now to heal this and yes. to see the absurdity of it all mm. because they love me dearly. <laughs> yes, of course. They they all do. I had I've had such a blessed life. Mm. The fact that my mind is trying to play just these little tricks on such a blessed life is, mm. you know, kind of ridiculous now that I look back on it. Yeah. The the mind it's just <laughs> It's a strange little device in the way it, it it presents these invitations and we can have been living through them for a really long time without ever kind of questioning them. But yeah, uh, it, yeah it, be, it becomes easier when we realize that the thoughts are not our own really. Yeah, I mean, it seems so long ago now, I almost can't remember the invitations, you know, but they, they looked like, you know, getting the most popular boy in high school, but then I was from the wrong side of town, you know, so I wasn't, I was, he was kind of a little bit ashamed of having me <laughs> or getting, getting to the college that everyone wanted to go to, like a beautiful place in Malibu. And then I know just surrounding myself with a couple of girls where we were just on the outside. We didn't want to do the sororities. We didn't want to do all the things you do in, so not quite included in that that university experience. Mm. Um, I was even, you know, I was a makeup artist for many years on, on a TV show. And that just fit that narrative too, where I'm, I'm kind of in this cool gang, but I'm not the actress, right? I'm the makeup artist. So, <laughs> so I want to like step back a little bit, mm. um, which is just fun to see because at, at all those times, of course, my mind was making that a big thing. Yeah. A, a drama. Now it's silly. Yeah, well, it's it's really nice to see the way things have evolved for you so quickly, really, especially in the past few months, because uh, lo lots of the the tendencies have just fallen away, and um, and it's just taken you into a great space, really. Yeah, yeah. I don't really hear that invitation much anymore. Mm. If if there is something where I hear that I wasn't actually even invited to something in a group, I'm like, oh, because I'm not supposed to be there. It's mm. not, yes. it's not proud. It's not what, mm. what my true self really wants. I don't resonate in that group mm. anymore instead mm. of it being about me. Yes. Which yes. feels so much lighter. Mm. And then um, what really happened that I thought was fascinating is right when I, before I had a conversation with you, couple months before I had uh, gotten a coaching life coaching certification from a school that I had wanted to go to for years. And I'd already been, you know, I have like 
four other certifications from from coaching but I I had a son he's nine so I had a son at the time so I wasn't quite ready to start that career and I'd finally found this beautiful career and graduated and I was gonna I was all in all of my desires I was gonna lose my 30 pounds that I always struggled with I was gonna get a new house I was gonna make a million dollars and really effort my well, way into this life that I saw would make me happy. Even though I knew from life coaching that that's not going to produce happiness, there was still some desire and some mm -hmm. dream that it would be amazing. And I was going to help people and I was going to look a certain way. And then I had my conversation with you <laughs> in mm -hmm. May. And that just kind of blew up all these desires. Like it just... I couldn't, after our conversation, I couldn't really get back to that state mm. of really needing all these things in my life. So how did it, how did it evolve from there then, Nina? Well, after my conversation with you, I was in, I was in Fiji for four months because I, I go with my husband yes. and travel for work. So I had the most beautiful surroundings to be mm. self-realized in those surroundings. So two weeks after talking to you you know every day I was just going to the beach I was seeing the world just through a different filter mm. I was still sort of myself which was a disappointment oh. at the time I <laughs> thought I would wake up <laughs> somehow you know walking on water but but everything was lighter and brighter and quiet it was so quiet mm. um there was just no angst. There was no need to go anywhere or do anything, which is natural for me anyway. I'm not such yes. a go, go, go person, but there was not the shame that usually comes with that or that you should be doing more or you're too lazy. Mm -hmm. So all that chatter fell away mm -hmm. for a little while. Mm -hmm. Um have you had I any invitation since then? Because quite often when there's a process of integration following realization there can be one or two invitations which come in and sometimes they can be um quite old ones they're all, or quite deep ones and, and they're almost trying to invite us back into individuality but it sounds as though it's been quite smooth for you it, it is smooth i i was invited back in you know i could feel i was so kind of calm and, and blissed out i think i told you that i I'm not your model student, probably, because then I was like, oh, no, there's something started not feeling good. And all of a sudden I found myself binge watching some kind of horrific Netflix shows. <laughs> you know, it really went the other way of like, no, let's get back into the drama of how awful life is. Mm -hmm. and I was recognizing that. I'm like, why am I mm -hmm. going back in there? Mm -hmm. But I was able to pull myself out of that. But then the other invitation that came back is we can't I'll just sit on the beach forever if if I don't get moving that yeah. was really the strongest invitation like if I don't effort if I don't desire will I just mm. want to sit here on the beach all the time and mm. I still have my nine-year-old boy and I was yes. scared that I wouldn't we were we're also trying to get a remodel going and I was scared that that wouldn't happen and I wouldn't be motivated to do anything if it wasn't coming from, from effort and planning. Mm -hmm. um, so I did feel myself kind of one leg on the side of wanting to stay in, in that bliss mm -hmm. and the other one not trusting it and being scared. So yes. that invitation was there for, for a couple of months. Mm. But um, it's evolved quite naturally really for you, hasn't it? It, it, it seems to be, a kind of integration in your view of the way things emerge in your life rather than having to change the outer circumstances. So I think that happens for lots of us really because in the world we're conditioned to try to move things around on the outside so things to do with where we live or who we're with or the way we look and all those kind of things but then there's a more subtle transformation which takes place where we just become more comfortable and and then whatever's required just kind of emerges for us and it's um it becomes quite magical then really it does seem very magical mm -hmm. it's 
I, I just told you recently, it's like, I, I feel my life is so ordinary, mm. yet it feels extremely magical. Mm. Yeah. I still have everything that everyone else has, right? I still have to get my child to school and, mm. and you have to cook and you have to uh, budget and do all those things, but mm. just with a, a lightness and a trusting that things will take care of themselves. Mm. Mm. And in my job, you know, I was efforting trying to get my career and getting a job through this company. And I got hired right be before I had talked with you. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of a, we, we want you, but hold on while we find a place for you. Mm -hmm. So because I was going to Fiji for four months, I was like, I'm fine with holding on because, you know, sure. <laughs> I'd love to enjoy my time in Fiji. Mm -hmm. So, so I was trusting that that would work out. And then in the meantime, after my conversation with you, I got an offer to just someone said, hey, there is this other company that's looking for someone. Would you be interested? And I found myself reacting in, in a very different way than I had before. Um, mm -hmm. Those things produce a lot of anxiety for me having to perform and be mm -hmm. a certain way. Mm -hmm. But I just found myself just saying, I don't know if this is for me, but yeah, OK, I'll see mm -hmm. where it goes. So just. I'll just do the interviews and mm. the interviews for this job were uncomfortable for my old story because they yes. required me to go on camera. It's a new way of interviewing. Mm. I had to, you know, just talk into a camera and answer a bunch of questions to just the camera, not mm. even a person. Mm. And I'll go into it later, but I do have a, a visibility story. It's a struggle with visibility. And so for a second, my mind said, oh, no, the camera. And then I was like, oh, but it's OK. It'll be fine. And I didn't prepare. Mm. You know, before I would have been, oh, my, I have to prepare so much, which is not my strong suit anyway. So, so mm. I, I love that. I just was kind of like, I'm just going to show up as me. Mm. And it's meant to be, you know, yeah, it'll be. And I had that. And I did a whole interviewing process. And I, I ended up not getting the job. But the learning, the beauty was really in the job application and seeing how how easy it was mm. and that I could just say yes to life and let it kind of um, guide me yes and what was interesting is this job I was I was being interviewed for was something called a success coach but for um, for a big company called audible and I hadn't thought of myself as a success coach I thought of myself as a life coach and so that didn't work. But then it was like a, not even a month later that my other uh, company that had offered me a job originally called and said, you know, we still don't have the coaching job available, but we're starting this new, this new mm. job called success coaches. Mm. <laughs> and I was, I couldn't believe it because I was just like, this is, where is this coming from? I'm not efforting this mm. at all. Mm. It was the same kind of job. And I just said, I don't know. Yes. I'll just say yes until I hear otherwise. Yeah. And that has just turned into a beautiful job where I've set my own hours in the most supportive company mm -hmm. that I can imagine working for, surrounded by amazing co-workers who take full responsibility, you know, and show up in responsibility and non-blaming. So, and I work from home and I can travel mm -hmm. and I can, I mean, it's just, and it's all my clients that I have, you know, I have 50 50 clients now almost that I'm in charge of mm -hmm. I think with them just is effortless and beautiful and, and nothing I think I shared with you the story of there was organization is not my my mm -hmm. strong you know I'm an, I'm an artist I'm a makeup artist massage therapist all these things that are not requiring me to be organized <laughs> yeah. and this new job they, they have a program that requires you to be somewhat organized and one day I thought, oh, I have to sit all weekend and really find a system. And I have to, I have to effort the system mm -hmm. of figuring out how to, you know, be on top of 50 clients and, and mm -hmm. make that one run smoothly. But then something in me said, no, it'll come. And actually, Piana, my aunt said, why don't you just ask, <laughs> you know, the effortless being to help you out here? And I said, oh, that's good. I'll let it be. And then I remember texting one of my coworkers. I'm like, what system do you use? Do you have a system? And she just kind of told me her system, which opened up an inspiration for how my system should go. 
And it really took half an hour. Wow. And she was so cute because she's like, I worked on it all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no efforting. And, and to me, because of her sharing, I don't use the same system, but her sharing just really opened up my own uh, inspiration for how I could do it. And so even things that are hard for me usually have become effortless. That's amazing. Yeah, that's um, yeah, it's incredible the way things just get taken care of. It's totally opposite to the way we've been conditioned, which is to take responsibility for everything with the mind. But then when we just kind of permit things to flow from our infinite nature, then it's a totally different experience. It's, yeah, it, it's amazing, really. And um, it's it's always progressive as well. You know, no matter what kind of synchronicities happen and um, what's kind of being revealed to us it it always gets better so it's yeah that's amazing though yeah and I really like the um I really like the idea that you had with Piana because Piana and I've had so many conversations and then you you were just speaking with her and and had this idea to maybe put some questions um you know just in a really simple way because some of the some of the concepts I use um if they're if they're heard out of context they can just seem um very difficult to understand but I, I really like the idea you have which is to um to actually create a sort of platform where people who are just entering into the possibility of um liberation or self-realization that, that there's somewhere they can go and and things are explained in quite a simple way so also, in, in recent months, that um, little project for you and piano has emerged, so, which I'm really looking forward to doing with you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can't, uh, we can't really get enough of your teachings. And you're, I feel like you're the kind of person that shares so uh, generously with us when we ask you but it probably didn't occur to you to, to put more out or that people were so thirsty mm. <laughs> for, for you and what you transmit and the way that you explain it. Um, you explain it in such a clear way mm -hmm. that we can hear it. And yet there's just so many more questions that come mm. with those explanations. And mm. I, I was talking to Piana, who's I feel on a different level of integration because that's She's the thing. She's cool, isn't she, Piana? <laughs> yes, I am the best. Um, you know, for and, and you can correct me. For me, I I do feel like I realized myself with your help back in May, but mm. there is an integration yes. that I'm just expecting to to continue mm. throughout the rest of my life. You know, yes. a, a a deepening, um, more of an ability to rest in that and and trust it and not be invited into the mind drama as much yes and she's at one level and i'm at another um and i want to bring in people who are where i was maybe in may mm. who have a, a yearning to feel better to mm. understand the meaning of it all mm. um but who maybe this is feels lofty or they're you know not relatable yet. yes yeah. And so where I found you was was then through Piana and through The Greatest Secret and Rhonda Byrne. Yes. And having been very interested and also work with Law of Attraction. Mm. And my coaching is also about, you know, creating your own reality. Mm. Yes. And that's that's news to a lot of people. Mm. You know, not our circle, because we just are with people who are already there, but yes. for to get to get everyone else on board mm. to see what's possible yes. seeing the freedom they can feel the joy that they can feel in in their everyday lives no matter what their circumstances are and also i think to maybe change their circumstances through a vibration you know yes uh, elevating your vibration yeah so i want to i want to get people in there with just the just the beginner and questions yes. Take I think it. that's great, really. Yeah, no, I love the way that um, things happen effortlessly because I tend not to initiate things. So 
I really love it when people come forward with a, a different idea. So Sarah came forward re recently, Sarah Larmanen, and um, we've we've done a course together, which has been great fun. And um, <laughs> and and um, and I really like your idea with with piano because that's that's something which um, <clears throat> it's kind of grounding in a way. It's a sort of feminine thing in a way to just say, well, hang on a minute, let's just get this grounded a little bit. <laughs> but it's. Um, I just trust the way things work. So if something needs to come forward, I know that there'll be some way that that appears without me having to initiate it. So it's it's all part of the fun for me, but it's an amazing way that intelligence works in, you know, in sort of revealing things. Um, but I, I love it, um, the way it can be so expansive and then other people can be involved. And, they, you know, I, I love the idea of there being no hierarchy as well, that we can just work and collaborate and that is you know it, it's something that we can share in the shared inspiration really yeah yeah i i love i love the idea that you know there is no hierarchy just like no one is better than anyone else because they're done with high school compared yeah. to first graders you know there's yeah. it's at different levels yes but, so yeah. if 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 a lot of your teachings is more on the you know the tail end of school mm also going in and getting it from from the basics you know yes. the where we are we're all here at first grade you know maybe i'm at yes. second grade and but not because we're better just in our understanding or even our interest yes um is at different levels yes and like I, when i saw you i was initially i was in my big desire for let's make a million dollars let's lose my weight let's and that's fun and it is possible even through efforting mm. yes so I want people to know that that's available to them. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, that's and a then, good, really good point. Because I don't think you want to skip it. You don't want to skip this stage and say, I shouldn't desire anything. No. If you're not there. If, mm. if I always <laughs> I like to think of it this way. When my, when my child was, when my son was about three, you know, those terrible threes, mm. um, we were drinking wine every night, a glass of wine every night. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't a drinker before that, really. Mm -hmm. And then once he was over the terrible threes, I had no desire. It wasn't like I told myself, don't drink anymore. Yeah. But my desire just had has run its course. Yeah. But that and then it was easy to not yes. drink, right? And it's the yeah. same. For the first couple of months after I, I spoke to you, there was still a little desire to to have my career go a certain way. Mm. And now it's just naturally, I still want to talk to people. I still want to um, help them is a strong word because they don't mm. need my help, but help them see themselves the way I would see them. Yes. You know, as beautiful, infinite beings. Mm. Um, but there's no desire to, there's no attachment to the outcome anymore. I mean, it's, mm. it's, so little yes it's it's quite think, different though isn't it really when um but you have to get to that organically i think you know you yes. can't say oh i don't want any desires and no. then almost like the priest back in the day right don't have a yes. desire for the flesh and don't but mm. it, it doesn't come through a natural um lessening of that desire mm. i think you're struggling yeah definitely so yeah, and, it, and we can kind of we can step in and out of individuality anyway you know the, that it's always available and it isn't something we need to get rid of it's just um it's just an aspect of our experience really but the the contrast between individuality and functioning from our infinite nature gives a great contrast to both so they're both much more fun then they are it's it's <laughs> fun to play in the realm of duality yes but knowing that you are not that individual yes yeah. So so I'm I'm still playing. Right? We're still going to do our house, but it, it was a funny story. We had moved out of our house while we were in Fiji, completely mm -hmm. out because we were going to have a remodel done, mm -hmm. and then it didn't happen. And I was really like struggling to make it happen before I met you. Mm -hmm. And then after I met you, it just dawned on us. We're like, okay, well, let's so we'll just move back in the house. We're not ready yet. It's not yeah. our time. Mm -hmm. And there just wasn't any drama about that. Yeah. Which was crazy. And now our contractor's like, are, are we going? And I'm like, yeah, when 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 it's right, when the timing yes. is right, we're going. It's mm -hmm. it's not that I'm not going to get my house done. 
right? It's just not going to be with the attachment. Yes. To it needing to be done a certain way or else I won't be happy or yeah. I'm not fighting it, mm. um, which has been beautiful. And the same, I just wanted to share a couple more things that have happened since our conversation. And one of them was my body and always efforting and struggling to lose 30 pounds and I gain them and lose them. And now I just don't. I mean, I probably lost 10 pounds since you, but without, I'm, I'm no longer doing anything. I just mm. am. I, I saw my body as the vehicle that it is, just this beautiful way that I get to move around in mm. the in the world. Yes. But it doesn't have to, I can, I can definitely keep it healthy and clean, but it, you know, it is a mode of transportation yes. that I, I'm grateful for now that I don't have to struggle with. Yes. It's like a car. You don't have to polish it every day, do you? <laughs> oh, or, or be upset that it's not the kind of car you thought you should have and just really love it. And mm. and and that's not to say, and I've not lost 10 pounds naturally. So it's not to say you can't be healthier, but it's not the, yes. the struggle and the beating myself up and the guilt. Yeah. yeah. That has fallen away. It is. It's. I think it's more challenging for women in some ways because the, you know, the way the media um, creates this sort of unattainable vision um, of the way she, you know women should look, and it, it's it's such a burden really, and it, it's so nice to be liberated from that and just to be having fun really, and then everything takes care of itself. And then I think I do I do want to share the experience I had um, with with death because you really helped me there and I think that might help people. Mm. Yes, certainly. Appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, just just last two two weeks ago, my father died and he'd been he'd been struggling with cancer that kind of came on more. He's had it for five years, but it really came the last couple months and um I was having you know, I thought I was handling it well you know with my my newfound <laughs> um ease in life but it was still hard to see him in pain and see him letting go having to let go of life mm. you know I thought yes. that was that was still playing with my mind and mm. I was going to sleep every night for a while just thinking about death and that the feeling kind of the heaviness of my father having to face death, that was the hardest part for me, that he was yes. in hospital bed having to know that his end was coming and maybe not being ready for it. Mm. And I wrote you, how should I, how can I see death? How, what, what can I understand about death? And how do I, how do I share this with my son who's nine that, you know, cause he, my father was gonna die. Mm. And you wrote me a beautiful letter and one of the things that really freed me and resonated was the idea that the invitation that I'd had, that this was, this had to be a big grief, that it had to be kind of an awful story, mm. you know, that, mm. that cultural conditioning of death being really sad. Mm. Um, that's not to say for, it's not telling other people what, how they should feel about death, no. but um but really, I could see, yeah, why why do we have a story that it is so sad? Yes. And I, I just immediately, when you said that, I something lifted in me. And the remainder of his life, I could have moments of just, of, of crying, but tears of joy. Mm. I wasn't yes. sad that he was dying. I was, I was overcome with emotion of my beautiful life with him. Yes. With remembering all the, the beautiful times we shared. So it wasn't that there wasn't any sadness, but it wasn't, wasn't, maybe it's the difference is grief with that. How would you define that difference? Yes. Well, I think we're all conditioned into the idea that grief is a, an expression of love. And we, we don't ever question that, but actually grief is something which affects our energy and it, it, it's a kind of pollutant in some ways. And so to be able to make the distinction between love and appreciation and gratitude for all the experiences you've had 
and not allow it to be tainted with, with grief is um, a really liberating way to deal with death. And it's so it's it's optional for everyone. I know you know some people feel as though they do need to allocate a certain period of time to grief, but it uh, it can be you know for a short period of time. But it it does erode our energy, so it's it's better not to um, to stay there too long, really. Yeah, I think that that's the key that you just said. It was I thought that it was a measure. My, my grief mm. would have to be a measure of my love for him. Yes. But when you said that, I could feel that, no, my love for him is here the whole time. Yes. Even when I'm not grieving. And sometimes yes. times I'll just feel that, oh, he's that presence of him. Yes. Maybe tears will roll from my eyes. and But yes. it doesn't feel like this shouldn't be happening. No, definitely. It's an acceptance of, of course, I want to feel this because. Yes. Also, because I have so much love for that. Mm shared experience here yes and her. also in in a wider sense just realizing that that the the simple sense of one's own beingness is where everyone is already and nobody actually leaves there to become the individual anyway so really the the story of separation and individuality is it's a ride really it's a you know, it's a little excursion um, when we actually never leave what we truly are. And and just knowing that, you know, when we close our eyes, that sense of presence is the sense of presence of everyone. So um, nothing's ever lost, really. Yeah, and I feel that. And, and I was able to convey that to my son, you know, mm. when explaining the death. And it was really beautiful. I was very... Yeah determined to not have a sense of it being horrific or awful yes. or something you know while still honoring the, yes. the spontaneous sadness that came from my son obviously yes. what do you mean i'm not going to yes. see yes. pop up anymore mm. but then it, it was just that natural um reaction from the body but not attaching the story yes he, yes. he then didn't have to have the story of how awful it was yes um, and it's great to intervene really with children because you can you can kind of guide them around things and 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 ensure that certain kinds of conditioning which aren't um, beneficial um, don't have to be installed and I you know I think for a boy of nine it's really nice to do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was sweet yeah I I, I can't say I feel guilty, but it, I, I do think that when people see me, because it's only two weeks ago that my dad died, mm. that they are expecting a lot more grief. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, um, I told my my stepmom, I said, you know, my dad was such a beautiful human being and, and bright and loved life and mm. color. And mm. I just don't see myself showing up at the memorial in black. No. I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> yes. Like... Yeah, that's great. And but it, it's funny sometimes, isn't it? Because um, we have to be aware of those around us as well, because um, so sometimes if people have a big investment in grief, we have to put on a little show sometimes just for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel myself pulled that way a little bit. And then I'm like, no, you know, <laughs> yeah. I just can't go there. No. No, it, it, you can sense intuitively that it's it's not really doing service to your dad, it, you know, just to remain joyful, especially as he was that kind of person. It's um, it's so much nicer to maintain that frequency on his behalf, really. Yeah. And it is easier for me to go there to be OK with it, because I do believe that we we never. We never yeah, die. there's no loss. No, there is no loss. So it's just a, a different experience of it. Mm. And I can make that whatever I want. Yes. Um, that's and you and, and, and Sarah, since I've been in that course, you know, the, the topics that we have there about joy mm. and delight have, I feel like that was like the last, the, the, the last push I had in, mm. in a paradigm shift. Um, mm. I remember there was a question to you, like, what is our responsibility here, David? And mm. you said, 
I mean, I'll, I'll butcher it a little bit, but you said something to the effect of, you know, to wake up and live your day in joy and delight. And that blew my mind too, just really hearing that, mm. that my whole life, you told me also when you first met me, like, I think you've been operating from you know, wisdom for a long time, at like an ease in your yes. life. I've yeah. always had, and you said, you're sitting in Fiji year after year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that you can teach me a thing or two about effortless yeah. being, right? Yes. Um, but I had always had a story about how that was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, that I should, it should be hard. Other yes. people uh, are, my, my, background my upbringing are from very hardworking people mm. successful people that have yes. worked hard to get there and that's mm. valued mm. and and there is that backstory of you have to effort you have to be productive mm. no matter what you do but be productive you yes. know um and i've just been able to completely let go of that and then that and that has not looked like i don't want to show up and work no, it's it's. I do. I'm just having yeah. so much fun with it. Exactly. It's not like work. It's the way you're describing um, your new career and the way that's emerging is is just it's it's to do with enjoyment, really, rather than to do with the idea of hard work. And it is. It's a changing context. So it doesn't. It's we're still productive, but it just doesn't look like work anymore because there isn't any. Um, there's no strain involved. Yeah. And that's the guidance, really, just the, the simplicity. You know, if, if anything is requiring, um, you know, strain, preoccupation, exertion, it's they're really um, forms of intuition, which is saying, well, are you sure you really want to go there? Because they're, they're optional, they're not compulsory. The word optional is just the, one of the best words that you, you've given us, you know, that all of this drama, all of these things that don't feel good are mm. optional. They're not yes. a truth. Yeah. If you're going to live in some fantasy that's not truth, it might as well be something that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, so I feel that I've gotten better at, at hearing or tuning into my body. Mm to what feels joyful and what doesn't and just operating yes. there yeah and i know that i can now if something doesn't feel good i now know that it's because i'm 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 believing something that's not true yes even though it seems very true right yeah. that the one that i that i woke up with this morning that is still an invitation mm -hmm. is not wanting to be visible not thinking that it's safe to be visible wow um mm. so that's but i'm smiling as i'm saying this to you because nothing's this serious i'm just noticing these these thoughts that have gone on questions yes for so long yeah well this we were saying um you know on the course with sarah it, it's really worth looking at the opposite of the invitation because um it's probably that being visible is going to be really, you know, the purpose of your existence and to be sharing knowledge. And But because it's a game that we're playing, it's a kind of energy game, then the, um, the, the purpose is being concealed in some way. And that, that's part of the fun, really, to just discover the way that uh, can come forward. So, yeah, it'd be great to see how that evolves, really. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, but, I, you know, I didn't, part of me did not want to be doing this on mm. camera. Yes. But I just, I, I just played with it. I'm like, but it's not a real story. It's just something that yeah. has tended to, to be important to my safety. Yes. You know, to my, to this character mm. that, that I'm showing up as. And yes. I had a, a friend a long time ago when you know, I was trying to come into this world as well of, of coaching. And I said, I'm just so shy. And she's like, oh, my God, that is that is so not true about you. And why are you telling yourself that story? And she, I really felt like that was a fact mm -hmm. right, that I was yes. shy. Wow. And, and at that point, I wasn't ready to hear what she was saying. Mm. No. <laughs> really, let me tell you all the reasons why I should I should yeah. have. And, you know, um, 
It's been quite interesting. Sorry, Nina. I no, go ahead. I was just going to say that it, it's been it's been quite interesting in the way things have evolved, say, since May, because with realization then there's been a kind of integration and with um the conversations you and i've had and with piano and the way things have moved forward from there it's as though the the ease of this conversation has kind of presented itself just at the right time whereas it so it's it's appeared effortlessly in a way rather than something where you needed to even be in opposition to those thoughts of um you know to, uh, around visibility yeah and that, i think that's a great um that's a great demonstration of the way effortlessness uh, can work because we don't need we don't need to go head to head with any of these programs really it's just the declining of them is in the most gentle way so we don't need to go to battle over them or or to um you know to make things um, confrontational in any way because just having the gentle intention they just tend to dissolve but it's all done sort of behind the scenes yeah it, it definitely doesn't feel like i'm the one moving this along mm. yeah. you know because the, the the i the personality doesn't want to do this and mm. thinks this is scary if i let it mm. run that story yes um and i remember even piana said don't don't look at other interviews to see how it's supposed to be done because that's where my mind wants to always go is look how other people are doing it yes and then i have to effort and Mm. then I just I don't want to effort so then I'd rather no. not <laughs> my effortless being is very strong in that sense that we just don't do it then yes but there, if there's really... one thing sorry I was just going to say if there's one thing which is compulsory it's effortlessness that's the only thing <laughs> and I'm, yeah I'm letting that be more and more the, the compulsion <laughs> instead of the drama yes you know and 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 since knowing you and speaking with you, just just saying yes more and trusting that, mm. Mm. that whatever's supposed to come from that is okay. Yes. And and again, not having a desire for it to end up somewhere is yeah. freedom. Yes. It's much more fun when it's um when it's just really spontaneous because we don't know where it's going to take us. And in you know, in the way um the conversation with with you, with Piana, um, and the way things are emerging, it's it's just something which happens of its own own accord. There there hasn't been any there hasn't been any planning really. It's just the, the way it's emerging effortlessly, and it's so much nicer there because when we're when we're desiring and when we're planning for things to go in a particular direction, because it, it it's um it's quite tedious in a way because even when we get there, it isn't ever quite what we were looking for. No. But it's what's really magical is when we don't feel as though we need to be guiding things in that way. We just hand responsibility to our infinite nature, and then it just becomes the most amazing journey where you you know you couldn't um, you couldn't design it to be um, that uh, magical, really. Yeah, but it's it's also just really seeing that it is the journey that's yes. fun right not yes. the destination and if we're yes. so focused on the destination that is i always heard that saying it's not the destination it's the journey that yes. made no sense to me <laughs> <laughs> destination and you know how can i do it without feeling any pain in the mm. journey mm. Um, but i'm noticing more of a trust in just it's going to be the way it's supposed to be yeah and and you're such a wonderful facilitator of that too, because I remember talking to you about the project that we want to do. And I said, yeah, but, and then I can edit and my husband can help edit. And, and you so gently and kindly said, yeah, I really like it just to be totally authentic. And, 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 and you still let it be up to me, but I was like, hmm. oh yeah, I could also just trust that it's exactly the way it's supposed yes. to, to be. Hmm. And that the, the raw form is so much more interesting Really. It is, yeah. Even if there are apparent little flaws and things, it's it's nicer in a way because people can see the whole direction of things. And life's like that, really. I think that you know the the mind can be monitoring things and wanting to edit. You know, it, it tends to bring guilt in sometimes and say, "Oh, I wish I hadn't said that." Or, um, but then just allowing it to be and then removing any element of guilt, it just becomes a 
well, it's more of a wild ride, but it's much more fun. <laughs> I think it really is what the soul craves, right? The ego loves perfection. Yes, the mind's idea of perfection. To, you know, the, the perfect Instagram bodies and the perfect, yeah. that's like, eats our ego story of effort and struggle. And mm. But the soul, when we see someone being flawed, yes, there's a certain love that comes from, yes, we're all that really. Yeah. All perfect at the same time. But yeah. <laughs> it doesn't Definitely. have to be. Right. That's, Lester Levinson says that. He says um, to see the perfection where the seeming imperfection seems to be. And it's very much like that, really, because it, the, the imperfection is only uh, a context, really. And uh, yeah, the, when the whole idea is to have a wild ride, then you don't need to censor it too much, really. Well, that's, that's the ultimate ride, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, it's uh, it is it's it's great, but there's definitely there's definitely a transformation in consciousness taking place, and you can see how um, the the ease um, that's available to kind of step into a different kind of paradigm is becoming available for a lot more people now. But it isn't anything that anyone is doing; it's just um, it's just emerging, really. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. It does feel effortless. Mm. And it, it, you know, even looking at if you're on YouTube channels or the books that are coming out, or yes, you know, this there there is more of a yearning for this kind of peace, yes. kind of yeah, giving giving up our ego. Yeah, definitely. And I love um, not having any kind of agenda as well, and you know there being no competition because if you if you're just your own you know just doing things in <clears throat> in the way that comes naturally to you then it, that's all you do and I, you know my feeling is well i'll just keep doing that as long as it's um you know as, as, as long as i'm being kind of called to do that but if uh, if it came to an end i'd be perfectly happy as well so <laughs> you know it isn't like trying to build any kind of um you know any kind of empire or anything it's just for it to be you know really easy and and then just to be able to let go of it it's you know we're called on to do things for a particular while and then they come to an end and uh, it's nice to know where to stop sometimes yeah that's, that's beautiful too there's another ride waiting for us yes yeah yeah, yeah. i i wanted to share too that you know that we all our journey looks so different for all of us that you've interviewed. Right? Mm. There are those that yes. have this, like my aunt had for a while, and I think maybe Paul. I've seen a couple where they just have these big experiences with. Yes. All of a sudden, they they just see themselves truly who they are, and where mm. mine is is has been more of a of integration. Yes. Yeah. Um. But just delightful <laughs> all the same um it's amazing the way infinite intelligence has kind of gathered these you know different um people you know to tell their story and it's such a diverse range of people and um it's quite interesting one of the invitations that can come up is you know there are people who sometimes are triggered into feeling that someone has a sort of higher level of realization than themselves. And, but that's also just an invitation really, because um, something which has emerged on this course, uh, because the, the course that we've been doing has, um, it, it just kind of developed on its own really. We had, the, the, there was a kind of outline as to, way it, as to the way it would unfold. But we didn't um, want it to be too rigid and too structured. But something that's come out really is to just to, to see the, the, the simple distinction between those who are self-realized and those who consider themselves not to be realized is the ones who consider themselves to be realized um, are no longer listening to the mind, whereas those who those who feel as though they're not realized they they're still believing the mind to be true but it's quite a it's quite a simple distinction really yeah 
And I, I mean, I hope we all see that because I had that the same one in the beginning. Well, I'm not really sure because I also had this happen today or yes. you know, this invitation came in or I thought about somebody that didn't seem very loving. Like I was not seeing everyone as myself. <laughs> so, you know, the invitation was like, well, you are clearly not there. Yeah, and, the mind puts those. Yeah. Yeah. And the energy of that and even for for the people that we have in, in our class or that all around and myself included to give energy, even when you verbalize it, mm. like I'm just not getting it or I'm not there or I don't think I'm yes. at the same level as so-and-so giving, when I give myself that energy, it, it takes hold. Yes. You know, and now I feel more, that if that thought comes up, I just don't give it energy. It's not that it doesn't yes. sometimes pop up and go, I should be more like so-and-so that yes. seems to be walking on water all the time yes well it's quite a it's quite a simple sequence in a way that once you realize that the thoughts are coming in as invitations and we can either accept or decline them um if we if we actually engage a personalized mode of expression so if the if the thinking or the speaking is in the personal mode then that's a form of consent in a way. So we've taken the we've taken delivery of the invitation, which is saying, oh, I'm not self-realized or I'm not good enough or something. And then if we express that in the personal mode, then we're saying, oh, I'm not self-realized, I'm not good enough. But that's a form of consent. Whereas if if we see it in the impersonal mode, because we're all remaining as the infinite impersonal being in rea reality. So if there's the delivery of an invitation, like that, um, the more correct way to describe it would be in the impersonal mode, where we just say, there is awareness of the delivery of a thought inviting me to identify with the idea of not being good enough. So it's, we, we actually break the energy supply then. We don't, we don't connect to that and we don't personalize it because um, all of the limitations exist within the personal realm and the the compromising of the energy um, in an emotional way um, is always by consent. So by identifying with those and then personalizing them in the way we describe them, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not self-realized, is, um, well, it's, it goes back to the, um, the biblical expression, in the beginning was the word. And so it's, it's really the word that creates the experience. And so when we um when we're more when we're more kind of discerning in in the way we utilize the language we can we can consciously maintain functioning from our impersonal nature instead um, by just just simply saying well there is awareness of a thought being delivered you know saying i'm not good enough yeah which i think is powerful and it also, because you would have to say it that way, yes. you know, take the energy off it. Yes. I see myself not wanting to say that when I'm around people, right? Because I feel yes, like- Yes, we can't really say it. Crazy. We can only say it to ourselves, can't we? <laughs> yeah. So, but even that, knowing that if I'm going to say it, it should sound like this, I am aware of. Yes. That sounds a little crazy. So why not just not say it at all? <laughs> yes. Decline. That yes. <laughs> Right. I know. Yeah, well, that, that's the you're, you're on to the more advanced stage, Nina, because just to decline it without, you know, allowing it to come into a conceptual realm is a more advanced version. So it's great that you've mentioned that. Yeah. And I can do that in certain things. I, I my husband and I always play with this one. We uh, we're older parents. And our son has had to hear us get up from chairs and beds with like just, you know, all the older sounds that we make, <laughs> you know, like everything is hard, like, oh, this hurts. <laughs> and our conversations, if we're not mindful, can be like, oh, my God, my knee again or or this is happening. Mm -hmm. And we're 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 making an effort to to not speak about it like yes. that, the body what do you think about like body aches and things like that? How, how do you speak if you have aches? How do you go about that for yourself? Well, actually I've, the way it's worked for me is um, the um, obviously getting older, there are certain things which show up in the physiology, but 
um, I tend not to I tend not to express those. So if there's something, if there's some little imbalance which emerges, I never go and discuss that with anyone. But what I found is that the remedy I need um, just kind of shows up efficacy. So um, my my family have, um, we've we've had a property business for years. So when I was younger, I used to enjoy um, doing physical work, especially in the nice weather, and um, so. So there, you know, there, there's been some kind of impact from that. But um, I have a friend who um, called by recently and he had this um, medication. Um, I won't mention it because it's not strictly legal. But, <laughs> but it's um, it was exactly the right thing. And he just he, he just came to visit and he brought it as a gift. And he said, oh, here, try this. And, and it was exactly what I needed. So, so I think not verbalizing it um, tends to keep it on a more subtle level and then just having the faith that whatever we need will show up. And that's certainly been my experience. I, I had another experience with, with a friend who I'd not seen for 50 years. He married a, a Spanish lady and lived in Spain. And I saw him about two weeks ago. And um, he, um, he's become very interested in, in health. And we had a conversation and he just imparted something which, you know, was totally invaluable and it just came from nowhere. So in, in terms of the direction life takes in, and in terms of solutions, rather than pursuing or researching things, I find that whatever's required will actually show up effortlessly. And, um, and just having holding that context seems to bring it about more as well. Yeah, interesting, because I, I guess even searching for it remedies and so it keeps the energy going that there's yes there's a, well it's yeah. the idea that there's a problem and that we don't have the solution so yeah. um yeah it is it's and it's much more fun the other way because you don't need to think about ailments and things you just you know just really enjoy your life in you know whatever way um you know i can't run as fast as i used to be able to but i don't really <laughs> I don't I mean, enter, enter myself into any races these days to draw attention to it. <laughs> yeah, it's also just a boring conversation. Right? Yeah, it I is. Mean, yeah. My husband and I, after a while, I remember saying to him, like, let's not, I grew up in a household where you said in the morning, you said, how'd you sleep? That was a, yes. a sign of affection and caring yeah. about someone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I noticed after a year or so, I'm like, you know, th this does not start our day off right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, after the age we're at, there's there's not a great sleep every night happening. <laughs> so if we start every day going, well, actually, I can see on my aura ring, I only slept one hour in really good sleep. And yes. it just set the tone. So it was like, that's yeah. we're not going to talk about how we, we only ask our nine-year-old son because we know he yes. had a fabulous sleep. <laughs> yes. So. Well, it's but, funny. I, I, love, um, I love living a kind of 24-hour day these days because... You find that, um, you know, we're conditioned into the idea that we need to sleep really well to feel good. But I think that we, you know, we waking up in the night to me is a great opportunity because I like to go into deeper states of consciousness or just to be able to be totally easy and relaxed and, you know, have that, you, you know, there are quite often times in the day where, where you feel as though it would be nice to lie down for a little while. And and to find yourself in bed already where you can do that is really nice. So it, it, a lot of it is the context of experience, but the, um, you know, the way we do that is something which is just, it's having the, the emphasis on our life being as delightful as possible. And if there are, if there's conditioning that we've subscribed to from the past, which is giving us the idea that certain things are unpleasant or certain things are undesirable, Quite often we can just change the context and it can be, you know, totally different. I mean, I sometimes I what I quite enjoy, <clears throat> I still live in my hometown here, and and um there are some characters from the past who I didn't really feel very compatible with. And um what I really like these di these days is if I'm if I meet them somewhere, um I just like to give them some time and attention. And what you find is that quite often there's been a kind of projection of limitation and I love to kind of turn it around in some ways so that if there's a feeling that there was incompatibility just to 
give the person full attention and you know just take it on to a completely new level so it's like a really um warm you know humorous sometimes um interaction and um that's i think that's the being able to change the context of our experiences it's really lots of fun and it just changes as i think anything any kind of limitation we can always change the context and um, it just makes life really delightful it does and and now with the paradigm shift i had through your wording of that you know it's try to live in joy and delight it's mm. you notice how that is not our cultural norm because no. when they get together and you say how are you very rarely do we speak very rarely really do we speak of everything that's lighting us up no uh, it's almost as if that you're not allowed to, no. right? You have a beautiful, easy life, no. but you get a lot more attention um, if it's your ailments or <laughs> someone died or work is really there's oh so yeah. busy at work is, yeah. and they just um, they don't feel very expansive those interactions. No, they're delightful. <laughs> <laughs> But you see how that I think is just conditioned in us to if yes. you are having a great life, it's almost like you're you're boastful or you're not mindful of everyone else's suffering and you should really tone that down. So we're yes. just not used to being an energy of my life is is amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's why that's why this is so fun. It's fun to be with these people who are are it's not that they can't share an invitation just to mm. We all help each other out seeing how ridiculous these invitations are but to have that a conversation about the awareness that it is an invitation it's not yes. a fact yes yeah uh, and to bring to bring people along for that in the way that you're doing it you know the book the greatest secret and all all these people that are mm. are telling us who we really are that we're not the, the yeah. personality mm. it's, it's so freeing mm. Fantastic, Nina. That's been lovely. And uh, yeah, it's it's great that, we, you know, you've been able to express such contrasting experiences. And uh, yeah, that's really inspiring. Thanks so much. It's been, yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.